to show you how to set up the radios, we are here at the simulator at SimTech, currently in a G1000 NXI, and we are in Morristown. Here's the airport diagram. We're currently using ForeFlight. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and zoom in on the top left, and we are going to tune in the ATIS frequency on COM2. This is how it normally starts. So you will see this aqua color box. You will push the COM knob in the center, and now we're going to set 124.25. Then we have this arrows, and you notice it brings the frequency to the active. The active side is the left. Now, this frequency is not in the airport diagram, but we are going to set 1 to 1 1.5. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push the COM uh, knob, and I'm going to set the ground frequency uh, and that is 134.2. Once again, I am going to press this arrows to set the COM frequency on the active. The reason why that is populated green is because on the audio panel of the G1000, we have COM1 mic illuminated. So what this means is we're talking on COM1, listening on COM1. We are also listening on COM2. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And the next frequency I'm going to set will be the tower frequency of 118.1. Okay. After you set up your frequencies, we will, in the real airplane, we'll actually, of course, be getting an ADAS now because we're listening to COM2. So I am going to push the COM knob button and once we're done obtaining our ATIS, I will set 1 to 1 1.5 as the active frequency on the COM2. Because we can monitor COM2, we can be monitoring guard frequency of 1 to 1 1.5. After we have the radio set up of 121.5 and COM1 set to ground frequency, we will call the ground frequency to get permission to taxi to the runway. It's very important to know that we already have the tower frequency. That way, when we reach the end of the runway, all we have to do is press the arrow button. After you do your run up, we can switch over to the tower frequency. This way, we already know that that is the tower frequency because we preset it before. So now, if we are going to talk to the departure after we take off from Morristown, it will be a wise idea to set the departure frequency on the COM1 standby, and in this case, taken off for Morristown, is normally is 126.7. And what I'll do is I would actually go into four flight, and I actually have it backwards. So this is because we're in a low, um, low workload environment. This is where you want to catch those mistakes. So now we have the tower frequency on the active, and we have 127.6 on the standby if we want to talk to the departure once we take off from Morristown. Another common mistake people do is they will try to be too proactive and they will try to set the departure frequency on COM2. That way when they're taking off, they can easily have the, the digit and just change it and then start pressing COM2 mic. Um, that gets in a high workload environment such as after the departure you are gonna be pretty busy. And the more buttons you're pressing, the more mistakes that could happen. At that point, your job is to fly the airplane first. And also doing this takes away the 121.5, which is offering you protection in case you're somewhere where you shouldn't be or ATC needs to get a hold of you. This allows you to be able to monitor that frequency. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.